So this list that I have here, it's it's base. It's all it is is an example. I would hope that you wouldn't write this and actually um, try to use it because the the .NET framework, along with every framework that I'm aware of, comes with its own built-in data structure types. So let's just uh, let me show that to you. If I say using system uh, using system dot collections dot generic, okay, I can go down here. And there's already a list, right? But list built in, and I can store ints if I want, and call it my list, and new it up, and do all that stuff. And then my list dot and five, and just like I was doing in the previous video, and ten, and my list dot and twenty. All right, and I got four in I I list, then uh, my list it has a length in there, or does it count? It's count. I don't know why they weren't consistent with the rays on naming there, but anyway, count, and I can say CW my list um, sub i, and this list will grow as necessary as I add and add and add. It will, I believe, the default implementation is to double its length, but run it, and you see we have the uh, exact same result as we did with the version that I wrote, except we don't need to write it. Microsoft wrote it, and we can just use it. That's quite convenient. So let me uh, give you a little bit of C sharp dot net history lesson. We have this list of int that I took from system.collections.generic but when when .NET originally came out we didn't have this generic part right all we had was system.collections okay and so instead of saying list of int we would say um, array list array list and then over here I'd say uh, new array list notice no generic argument okay no generic argument all right it's just simply an array list and then when we call add Notice what happens here, it takes an object value. If you remember OBJ ECT, the compiler, when you write OBJ CTT, OBJ ECT, the compiler simply translates it to system.object, and just replaces a simple textual replacement. And uh, object is the base class for all classes in the .NET framework. All right, so that means this array list, I could add whatever I want to, all right, int, int technically inherits from objects, so I can add an int, but, oh, by the way, I can also uh, add a string here, okay, and then have another int. So if I run this as is, uh, uh, nothing blows up, but notice we kind of mixed apples with oranges now. Now I I uh, have a 5 and a Jamie and a, and a 20. It's, I, I don't have a consistent type. Also, perhaps I'll make a video on this, but uh, it, it also causes some boxing to happen. There's a little overhead and garbage collection gets involved and yada yada. So, so this is not ideal, but the reason why uh, Microsoft did this is simply marketing. I, uh, I am pretty sure on this, don't quote me on it, but marketing. We had to get .NET out fast. Java was the big thing back when .NET came out. Have to compete with Java, so let's get .NET out quickly. Oh, it's going to take a while to get those generics implemented. That's okay. Ship the product. We'll just say object on everything so we can get it out sooner than later. And now, for years on end, we've had to suffer with a lot of the old school libraries that we use that are still good, but sometimes once in a while we are forced to use something that's not generic and simply deals with objects. So that was their cop out. All right, sorry for getting opinionated and religious there. All right, but anyway, version two of the .NET framework they added generics. Uh, C Sharp had support for generics at that point. They actually had to modify the runtime. It's the only time. Uh, up to date that the runtime, the CLR has been uh, modified and updated. Um, version 2, okay, and they added generics. So generics are actually native to the .NET runtime. Um, what the, the, the significance of that will come in more apparent in later videos. For now, just it's native, be happy. I don't believe Java does it that way. I think they do some hacks on the compiler level. Anyway, um, if you look, if you look, you can see a lot of old school system dot collections dot, and there's there's uh, I don't know, a lot of these I don't use, but there's bit array array list I just showed you, um, dictionary or hash table I guess ha hash table has dictionary entries in it, which is a associative container, and then we have all these interfaces, which in my opinion are mostly useless. We have a queue, that's nice if you know what a queue data structure is. Sorted list, ooh, stack your basic run of the mill. Uh, non-generic data types, okay. We go here and I say q dot add, add or no, it's nq, 
and Q again, take the generic object instead of a generic argument type. Um, but if we go down to, or go back into uh, generic, system.collections.generic dot, and then notice all these types have the angle brackets just waiting for a generic argument to be passed passed to them. You see even the interfaces are generic. Uh, kind of nice. List, Q, sort of dictionary, stack. Ooh, we get a lot of fun things in here. All right, so basic... Uh, reason why we have the generic types, not the only reason, but by far the most motivating is for collections, collections of objects.